Good morning, my name is Anna Metzger. I am a sixth former at Millbrook School. And for my ISR project, I proposed a design for faculty housing. Um, the real driving factor behind this project was climate change. Buildings account for over 50% of the world's um, energy consumption. And um, in the world of architecture, the green architecture has become a real demand. Green architecture is the idea of using, um, of designing buildings um, in accordance to sustainability and um, environmental preservation. And in addition to that, um, buildings can have a real effect on people's mental health. Um, poorly designed buildings can evoke feelings of stress, anxiety, depression. And so designing buildings to be as um, suitable to um, people is very important. And um, so to do this, I, um, I did a few analyses at Millbrook School to um, design a house that would be the most sustainable, functional, and um, cost effective for the school and um, their faculty. And the purpose of this was to um, help Millbrook School maintain carbon neutrality and um, hopefully provide as um, beneficial housing for um, faculty as possible. So um, the first analysis I had to do was called a site analysis. A site analysis is the process of um, surveying land for a proposed building site and figuring out um, what environmental impacts the um, design of the house would have, and also how the natural environment would affect the design of the um, building. And so to do this, I surveyed a few locations on Millbrook School's campus, and um, one of them was on Millbrook School Road, and um, the other was on off of Levitt Road on Faculty Lane, which is near where the um, current faculty duplexes are. And I ultimately settled on the second location because um, of its, both its proximity to campus, but also its um, natural surroundings. It is located on Upland Meadow, which is pretty ideal to build on. In addition, um, Millbrook, the master plan of Millbrook's campus um, has indicated that site to be um, possible for future faculty housing. So it seemed pretty ideal. Um, also, the site receives a lot of natural lighting, which is um, pretty ideal for this um, design. Uh, the second analysis I had to do was called a program analysis. A program analysis is really um, just creating a list of needs and wants of a client and um, using that to implement um, and um, inform the design. So to do this, I started by analyzing um, data populations and gathering information on that. And um, I gathered information on the populations of the Millbrook, um, Stanford, Amenia areas, and also salaries of um, faculty in these areas at both public schools and at Millbrook School. This was to um, help inform the cost of living in the Millbrook area. Part of Millbrook School's faculty um, compensation is housing. So um, providing um, affordable housing for um, faculty is um, very necessary as um, typically independent school teachers make less than public school teachers. So that part of their compensation is crucial. Um, and from there, I decided to meet with um, design professionals, including Voith and McTavish Architects, who are the architects working on the master plan of Millbrook's campus, as well as um, Mr. Smith, who is the chief operating officer of Millbrook School. And he um, really informed me on um, things to consider when designing for um, Millbrook School and um, boarding schools in general. I also met with Dennis Wedlick, who is a locally based architect um, who works on a lot of sustainable and um, social um, architecture projects. And from these meetings, I concluded that the best way to understand what Millbrook faculty, need, um, faculty needs is um, to survey them. So I, did, um, I created a Google survey and I sent it to um, the faculty 
and I got 38 responses. And some of these questions included, how would you describe the size of your home? Do you find your home private? Do you, um, what is your favorite aspect of your home? What is your least favorite? What is your favorite room in your home? And um, from this data, I was able to um, apply the likings and fix the dislikings of the um, faculty. So um, from the survey, it was concluded that the average um, household size of Millbrook School is rough, um, Millbrook School faculty is roughly 2.63 people, so two to three people. And um, probably the biggest takeaway was that the, um, the average size of a Millbrook faculty school, um, Millbrook faculty house has to be larger. So to do this, I increased the square footage to about 2,500 square feet, which is um, larger than most faculty homes. It was also concluded that there needed to be more storage space. So to do this, I added um, more closets and a mud room for more storage. And also, um, I added a lot of windows, both um, because the, the survey indicated that faculty like natural lighting, but also because um, natural lighting has, and um, views of the outdoors has a lot of psychological benefits for humans. So um, the, here are some images of the floor plans I des designed. Um, as you can see, um, in the, on the ground floor, that image over there, I, um, right as you enter, there's a mudroom to the right, and to the left is a room I called the library or office or formal living room. That room is so um, fa other faculty members or um, students can go visit the, um, the faculty member who lives in that house without really entering into um, any private spaces of the home and um, invading any privacy. And right across from that, I added a bathroom for guests to use. And um, additionally, I added at least one window to um, pretty much every room except one bathroom. And this is to um, really encourage the feeling of spaciousness, but also to um, provide a connection with the um, outdoors and the natural environment, which has, um, can reduce anxiety, stress, seasonal affective disorder. Additionally, I kind of in the back of the home on the first floor, I, cried, I tried to create an open floor plan because that was indicated as a liking of Millbrook faculty. And so this, the kitchen, um, living room, dining room area is all one big space. Um, then considering um, sustainability was pretty much the biggest aspect. Um, optimally, the design of the home would be um, net zero, meaning that it's, um, it would produce as much renewable energy as, it to, um, as its own annual energy consumption requirement. So it would be carbon neutral, and um, this could be done by, number one, using solar. Um, Millbrook School has a solar field that um, provides electricity to most of the campus although that solar field is pretty much at its max capacity. So um, either adding more solar, um, solar grids or um, adding solar panels to the roof of the home would be able to power it. And additionally, um, using passive solar, which is um, orienting the home so it has a direct um, exposed um, view of the sun and um, having materials in the building that would collect that heat and um, provide heating to the home. So um, that is number one. Number two, um, using geothermal technologies for heating and cooling. Millbrook School already does this um, in quite a few buildings, including the Math and Science Center, the um, Student Center, the barn, the dining hall, and um, Koningsberger Hall. And um, this would just be another way for them um, to reduce um, any negative impacts on the environment when it comes to energy and heating. And um, furthermore, um, just 
doing all the little things in the home um, to make it at minimum LEED certified. LEED is an organization that works with the um, United States Building Council to create a framework for um, sustainable design. And um, so this, these um, little things that could be done are um, implementing low flow faucets and shower heads and um, energy efficient appliances like washing machines or dishwashers. And um, really Millbrook School needs to do this because the world of architecture is changing and um, is becoming, it's really ubiquitous designing um, to be sustainable and green and efficient. And um, Millbrook has the resources to do this and um, frankly needs to, to remain carbon neutral as it grows. Thank you.